Okay, I'm Deborah Castu here from Answers About Alzheimer's. All right, let's talk shit. Literally, we're talking shit. Okay, okay, this is the fun stuff, right? Not. Toileting has to be one of the toughest parts of caregiving for someone with Alzheimer's or any other dementia. Terrible toileting is one of the number one reasons families give up and surrender to moving their loved one to a care facility. And listen, we don't do guilt here. So if you're at the end of your rope and you've made a decision or when you do make a decision, it's okay. We can only do what we can do. So no guilt here. You're safe with me. I've been in your shoes. I've traveled your road both professionally and with hundreds of families. No one is in your head or your body, only you, and that's okay. Give yourself permission. The best give you can give yourself took me about 50 years to get it. It is what it is, and there's not a whole hell of a lot we can do about it. So it's go for it or forget it. So for the next few days, weeks, months, or maybe even years, we're gonna be wiping up crap and piss and diarrhea, and it's gonna be everywhere. It's gonna be in the bed, on their clothes, in their shoes, under their fingernails, smeared on the walls, on the chairs, and the upholstery. It's gonna be in the car, and definitely in every crevice of the bathroom and their bodies. It just sucks. That's all I got. It sucks. No, just kidding. That's not all I have for you. But <laughs> I'll tell you, I wish I had a lot more. Hopefully, you'll get something out of it. But at least you've got a friend and someone you can be real with. Comment below and let me know about the shit you're dealing with. Because the truth is, your friends don't really want to hear about it. So load it on me. I got you. Please remember... They can't help it. Getting upset will not have any change or result or any difference in the outcome. So take a breath and press on. My first recommendation is to get gloves. Lots and lots of gloves. Then get a menthol chapstick or smelly chapstick and slap that chapstick all over your upper lip. Next, get the best scent of body spray that you just love. When you buy it, like at Bath and Body Works, take your time. Smell them all. Pick your favorites. Take a mental note. Close your eyes. Start to condition your brain that every time you smell it, it calms you and puts a smile on your face. Hey, did you know that even a fake smile can improve your mood? No shit, really, I swear. So fake a smile. You probably need to. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a quick story. I just love this story. A long time ago, probably 10 or more years ago, I had a client named Peg. She was awesome. She was on her dementia journey. Peg was living in a senior living community and my company was providing home care for her. Mostly just some cleaning, laundry, medication reminders, stuff like that. Well, one Saturday, I needed to talk to Peg's caregiver, Trisha. Oh, hey, by the way, Trisha, if you're out there and you see this, message me. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, anyway. Um, so I called the client's apartment and asked for the caregiver. Peg said to me, are you calling because of what happened? And I said, no, I just wanted to see if Trish could maybe do another client after you. Why? What happened? There was a long pause, and she said very sheepishly, I tried to go to the toilet. I have no idea what happened, but I pooped right in the middle of the living room floor, and Trish had to clean it up. She sounded so upset with herself and so embarrassed. So this is what I said to her right then and there. I said, well, you know what, Peg? And she said, what? 
I said, shit happens. There was a bit of a pause and then she just burst out laughing. So I asked her to have Trisha call me when she had a minute. And so after a while, I got a call from Trish and I asked her if Peg had told her about our conversation. And Trisha said, no. And I told her what I said. And then Trisha says, oh, well, that explains it. When I came back from the laundry room, Peg was standing in the middle of the room. And when I walked in, she flung her arms open wide. And with a big smile on her face, she yelled, shit happens. <laughs> oh, my God. Talk about a great moment. We turned a very embarrassing moment into laughter and joy. Peg had her power back and more. That's what I call a success. Now, I know we can't have amazing moments like that all the time, but we can try, right? It's a great story and a great ending. But we're talking shit here. So yeah, back to business. Let's try some strategy now. First, Try to do toilet reminders every two hours. Lead them to the toilet and attempt to go to the bathroom. Do not ask them if they need to go to the bathroom because they will always say no. Have easy on and off clothing, making it easier for both them and you. Another idea is to install a bidet. A bidet can be installed right over an existing toilet and they're pretty inexpensive. I think maybe a couple hundred dollars and it might be worth a try. This type of toilet may help you clean up and reduce odor. It can also help reduce skin irritation and breakdown. Another idea is to use wipes instead of toilet paper. And please note, I did not put the word baby in front of that. No baby wipes just wipes or towelette. It might be more convenient to have a couple of commodes in several rooms to avoid rushing and for those who are maybe losing their mobility. When a person has neurodegeneration and they are having issues with toileting and they're wearing protective underwear, depends, absorbent underwear, use those words. Do not ever use the word diaper. If you can't remember any other word other than diaper in the moment, then don't say anything at all. Never, ever say diaper. Comment below, Deborah, D-E-B-R-A. Deborah, I promise to never use that demeaning word diaper. If your loved one or resident that you're caring for refuses to wear adult protective underwear, an alternative could be to just remove their regular underwear and replace it with absorbent underwear, leaving no other alternatives. Another tip that I found was if you take the adult underwear and kind of scrunch it up or loosen up the fabric a little bit, they're much more comfortable to wear. So as the support person, I know this can be a really rough time and I'm sure you never imagined spending your day cleaning up these nasty messes. Try your best to remember they're not doing this to you on purpose. You're doing a great job. I'd love to tell you that it gets easier, but it probably won't. So smear that chapstick under your nose, put on those gloves, and think of that story of Peg. Get through another day and know that I'm here with you. Comment below. I got you. Together we can. Thanks for tuning in to Answers About Alzheimer's where we answer all of your questions related to dementia. So comment below, let me know what you need, what you're struggling with. You are not alone. Hit the like and subscribe.